Hi everybody. Being an ophthalmologist, I really appreciate the importance of vision. Now bear with me, you might find this fascinating. In the underwater world, vision is just as important, maybe even more important for survival. Now with underwater macro and super macro photography, sometimes I've been amazed at the things I see in my images, things that I didn't always notice at the time I took the images. And we can not only appreciate the beauty, but also learn from these things. Now in this video series, I'm going to show, in my opinion, some beautiful animal eyes, and I'm going to show some amazing and unique ocular structures and adaptations that various aquatic animals have evolved to help them survive in their watery worlds. So let's check out some examples. <clears throat> For example, some fish living in bright environments, like the balloon fish, have eyes similar to our eyes, but have a very special twist to help them in a bright niche, such as a coral reef. They have built-in sunglasses, and pretty intriguing ones at that. As we will be seeing in an upcoming video, balloon fish and other fish have corneal iridescence, collagen plates in their cornea that reflect certain wavelengths of light, much like an oil slick on a wet highway. Essentially, this represents sunshades to help these fish see in the bright and fluctuating light of the reef. Octopuses have eyes that are surprisingly similar to fishes in design, yet these animals are invertebrates and have extremely different evolutionary origins than fishes. An octopus is an excellent example of convergent evolution. We'll talk about this later. And it illustrates the vital mechanisms of sight in very diverse lineages. Surprisingly, we learn that octopuses manage to change color and even texture for camouflage and prey capture. And we will see many beautiful octopus eyes, their unusual pupil, and the texture and color of the skin surrounding these eyes. These images remind us of just how different we are from these animals, and yet our eyes have a lot in common with theirs. But let's take a few minutes to examine how the eye works. There are two basic types of eyes, compound eyes and camera eyes. Many invertebrates such as insects and crabs have a compound eye that is composed of many individual optical units with light entering through multiple openings like the eye of this underwater crab. However, in the first few videos of this series, I will mainly discuss camera style eyes like ours and like this image of an angel, angelfish. Eyes with a single optical unit like a camera. A camera eye is found in vertebrates it, like mammals, reptiles, birds, and fishes, and also in invertebrates, cephalopods like squids and octopuses. But let's do a basic review of the parts of an eye. Here's a simple diagram showing a side view cross section of a camera style eye of a typical fish. Light is the large blue arrow is being transmitted through the cornea, lens, the pupil, which is the opening in the iris, through the lens and focused by the lens onto the retina. The retina then transmits, uh, transmits image information through the optic nerve to the brain. Now, the cornea is the green arrow. That's the front clear part of the eye, like a crystal over a watch glass. It covers and protects the inner structures of the eye. The iris, which is the yellow area, is the thin circular tissue behind the cornea, which controls the shape and size of the pupil. In humans, the color of the eye of the iris gives the eye its color. The pupil, which is the black arrow, that's simply the opening in the iris, and that allows light to pass through and onto the retina. The lens is the red arrow. That's the solid round structure behind the cornea that focuses light rays entering the eye and it focuses these light rays onto the retina. The lens is attached to the eye wall by ligaments, which are the light blue arrows. The retina is the purple arrow in the back. That's the light sensitive layer of tissue like the film of a camera that lines the inner surface of the back of the eye. Now we don't really see the retina of fishes when taking underwater images since it's at the back of the eye. The retina is composed of thousands of photoreceptors, individual cells in the retina that turn light into a chemical impulse. And finally, the optic nerve down at the bottom, the gray area, is composed of retinal cell processes which exit through the back of the eye and transmit information to the brain. Now here is a side view of a beautiful porcupine fish eye. And you can easily see the clear cornea in the front, the green arrows, the large round spherical lens, the red arrow, which focuses light 
onto the retina, which is not seen in this picture. The yellow arrow shows the iris surrounding the lens, like the diaphragm of the camera. The pupil is the central opening in the iris through which the light passes. Now here's a front view of the eye of a cornet fish. The cornea is clear and cannot be seen from this front view, but you can see the round spherical lens, the red arrow. It looks black, but it's actually not black. It's clear. It just looks black in some of these images. And the lens transmits and focuses light onto the retina, which again is not seen. The yellow area arrows show the iris, and the blue arrow shows part of the pupil, the central opening in the iris, through which light passes onto the retina. Now, vision helps animals survive by allowing them to find food, avoid predators, seek shelter, and find suitable mates. Two important aspects of vision are resolution, the ability to see fine detail, and sensitivity, the ability to see in low lighting. Resolution and sensitivity depend on the size and quality of the optics of the eye, the cornea and the lens, the overall size of the eye, and the size and number of photoreceptors, the individual light sensitive units in the retina. In this video series, I'm going to show many cool images of unusual and unique eyes and ocular adaptations that animals have evolved to help them thrive and survive in their watery worlds. And by the way, great care was taken never to harm or stress out any animal. I took all these pictures while snorkeling or diving in the Atlantic or Pacific Ocean. So let's check out some future topics. I'm just going to show you a few cool examples, just give you a little preview of what I'm going to plan on showing in some upcoming videos in this series. <clears throat> let's check out some interesting examples. For, ex for instance, why is the pupil such a different shape in different aquatic animals? For example, it's round in this eel, the pupil is sort of W-shaped in cuttlefish, and the pupil is slit-like in some sharks and other animals. Another question, why do some fishes have something covering their pupil from above, like this scorpion fish or this incredible crocodile fish eye? Why is the lens of fishes so large and round as compared to humans, um, like the red appearing lens in this uh, scorpion fish? Why do some fishes have such bright colors around their eyes, like this butterfly fish? Why are there apparent moving dark spots in the eyes, the compound eyes, of crabs and shrimp, like the two dark spots in this super macro image of the eye of a mantis shrimp? Why do some fishes have eyes with, which protrude from the top of their head, like this flounder? And why do some eyes just look bizarre, like this conch eye? I hope you enjoy these videos for two reasons. One, you'll be amazed at the sheer beauty of these wonderful animal eyes. And two, you will gain insight into how these ocular adaptations have helped animals survive in their watery world. 